Hey everybody, welcome back to Jim's Garage. In this video, we're gonna be looking at dynamic DNS. What's dynamic DNS? Well, as you're probably aware, your ISP gives you an IP address. I'm gonna be focusing on IPv4 for this video. IPv6 is a whole different kettle of fish. But most consumer residential broadband, for example, will have a dynamic IP. That means at irregular or regular intervals, your IP address can change. You've probably noticed this most if you've ever rebooted your modem, had a power cut, etc. Now that by itself for the 99% isn't going to cause a problem. Where it does cause a problem is where you're trying to self-host and you have your IP address tied to a domain name. For example, jimsgarage.co.uk points to my public IP. Actually, it points to Cloudflare, but that's another story and I have videos on that. But effectively, what has to happen is your IP address needs to match the domain record that's on your domain registrar and on the DNS name servers. Now, what that means is when somebody goes to Jim's garage, they come to the right IP. The problem is if your dynamic IP changes, that no longer works and it can create a whole host of problems, especially if you've got people that are remotely connecting to your services or you've got sort of a hybrid environment, you've got some, say, cloud infrastructure and you're relying on DNS for that and, well, even IP, to be honest. So that's where dynamic DNS comes in. It will dynamically, automatically change your IP address on your domain record if your IP address changes on your external interface. So I'm gonna show you a few ways in which we can do that. One within the firewall, so we'll have a look at OpenSense and PFSense, and I've already covered Sophos XG on how to do this. The next will be a Docker container using DDNS client. That's an actual Dockerized implementation of the agent that you can deploy onto a server. So do note that whilst we'll be using the container here, there is just a binary you can download and the configuration of that using a configuration file is exactly the same. The last and probably the most crude method we'll look at is just to run a script. And that script can be run as a cron job to make sure that it updates. Now, how does it work? Well, basically it pings a website, so it could be anything. If you've ever typed in what's my IP into Google, you'll see your external IP address. Basically what it does is ties into a DNS provider's API and it says, hey, what's the IP address for this domain? Now, because it knows your IP and it knows the IP that's associated with that record, if there's a discrepancy, it knows it needs to perform an update. Now, many of the tools I'm gonna to show today support multiple providers. I'm gonna be using the example of Cloudflare because I use it and it's pretty popular, but there is support for others which you can go and have a look at. The actual configuration steps will be exactly the same. It's just, you'd need to amend where it says the provider or protocol. You need to change that to your provider. So once you've configured that correctly and you do that by having your username and an API key, it allows it to then dynamically update your IP to match the IP address that's been assigned to you. That typically happens within sort of a five minute interval and it might take a few more minutes for that to propagate across the web, but I've been using this for a number of years now and it's helped me no end because I've had a dynamic IP for years. So let's stop waffling now and let's jump into the configuration. We'll start with the firewalls first. So over on my OpenSense box, don't worry, more PFSense coming soon. You can see that I've got my one IP address up here, obfuscated for obvious reasons, and that's mirrored on my Cloudflare domain. So to get this up and running, we actually need to download a plugin first. So we need to go over to the system, and then we need to go to the firmware, and then we need to click on plugins. Now, once it's refreshed all of the plugins, you wanna look for this one here, OS DD client installed. So if that isn't installed, make sure it's installed. Once that's installed, you can then go over to the left-hand side and you can scroll down to services. And within services, you'll see this new one here called Dynamic DNS. If we click on that one, we've got the settings and a log file. So if we click onto the settings, here you can see that I already have this configured for my domain. And you can see my IP here, which mirrors what was on the dashboard and also mirrors which is on my uh, Cloudflare domain. And you can see that this was last updated on the 2nd of July at 20 past 10. 
So actually, with my ISP provider, I don't have a static. I have kind of what's colloquially known as a sticky. So provided that your router switches on and off and it's within, say, the DHCP lease or whatever they have configured, typically you're going to get the same IP for a long period of time. But do note that it's not static and there's no guarantee that it will stay the same. So something like this is still imperative. So to get this to work, it's pretty simple. We just need to click on the plus sign here and then complete the rest of the wizard. So for this description, we could just do Cloudflare. And then for the service, we drop down and we select Cloudflare. Now this is where I mentioned there are different types of providers. And so here you will choose your domain registrar. So all the popular ones, for example, might be Dynamic DNS 2 or Duck DNS, whoever. I'm going to choose Cloudflare. Now in the next area, I'm going to be putting my username. Now the username for Cloudflare is your email address and the password is not the password that you log into their dashboard with, it's actually an API key that you need to generate. So you might have seen me do this previously where we've set up traffic for example to pull down domain names. Effectively we need to create an API key that gives it access to be able to both read and write to the domain record. Now as a quick refresher, you need to head over to the Cloudflare DNS manager and you need to go to the API token section. Once you're in the API token section, you need to create a token because you can't get the existing keys. You want to create one and it needs to be an edit zone DNS. And then I'm going to just leave that as zone DNS and give it edit privileges. And where we go down, I'm going to change this to a specific zone. And then I'm going to select my domain name from here. I'm not showing that for obvious reasons. I have multiple domains, but you just want to choose your domain from here. Once you've done that, you can click continue to summary and save. But it is also important to note that if you want some additional security around that, you could do client IP address filtering, which limits the IP addresses that can change this. The difficulty being, we know we've got a dynamic IP, so this would not work when your IP changes. But if you've got a static IP and you want to be doing something, just note that that's there. Anyway, once you've continued to the summary, you'll get a snapshot of what your key is. Do take a note of that, and then it should appear within this area here. So now heading back over into OpenSense, you want to put your address in here, and you want to put that API key in here, and then you want to match the zone to be the IP, to be the DNS record you want to update. So remember, we chose a specific zone. You could choose all zones, but if you put a zone in there, you need to make sure it's this zone here. Now the host name is also your domain name here. So we'll just copy and we'll paste that in. Now the checking of the IP method, there are third parties that we can use, but we're not gonna use that. We're actually gonna use our WAN interface. Now that's because the router obviously knows what IP address you've been assigned. So we're gonna monitor an interface and you can probably guess that the interface we're going to monitor is actually the WAN. And it can do force SSL if you want to do those checks. But once you're ready, you just need to hit save. Once you've hit save, you should get a record that pops up like this. And if your current IP address and your DNS record are accurate, it shouldn't do an update. If they are different, and I'll do a test at the end whereby I manually change it to something daft and then get it to update and witness that change, you should see that update. So if you actually go into the general settings here, you'll see that we have to enable this. We can see that the interval is set to five minutes. So that should be all that you need now to have dynamic DNS set up with an OpenSense. And I'm not going to show Sophos XG because I've already done that in the past, but please do go and refer to that video where I've shown it previously. Now let's move on to PFSense where it's pretty much exactly the same configuration. Now thankfully the PFSense dynamic DNS installation process is a little bit simpler. That's because dynamic DNS is already available. So if we go into services you'll see on here that we've got dynamic DNS. And thankfully it's pretty much rinse repeat from OpenSense. So we want to hit add. And then we're going to need to basically add all of the credentials we've done previously and we're going to do in the future. So the service type, we're going to drop down and we're going to choose Cloudflare for this instance. Thankfully, the interface to monitor is already pre-populated to the WAN, but you can obviously change that if you wanted to. The host name here, you're going to put in your FQDN, so your domain name, and you'll put it in here as well. Now, remember, you can have multiple domains to different host names. 
Um, we're not going to enable the proxy for this. It's default disabled, but you can enable that if you want to. That will basically ping the API and then turn on the proxy for you. A bit like when you go into the Cloudflare dashboard and you enable or disable the proxy. Sometimes the proxy is good. It will hide your IP, but some services do actually need to have your actual IP. And some services aren't allowed to use the proxy. So things like Plex and media, basically anything that's heavy media usage. In here, you're going to need to put in your username, which for Cloudflare is your email address. Um, I'm not sure why it says username is required for all except Cloudflare. Um, enter email. Maybe it's because it doesn't need a username. It needs an email. But regardless, you have to put your email in there. Your password. Now, that's your API key, not the password that you log into the website with. Once you put that in, we want to put a time to live so you can put one again for one minute and give it a description if you want. Then all you've got to do is hit save and then that will show on the providers for the DNS. So let's now hop over and get this running up in Docker. So over on my Docker host, I'm using the convenient DD client, which is what I mentioned earlier. And the good guys at Linux server have containerized this for us. And at the moment it's proactively maintained, so good stuff. Anyway, to get this up and running, it's pretty straightforward. We need to go through two files. The first is just deploying the container, which is what you can see on screen here. We're pulling down DD client latest version. We're setting some environment variables, basically just running this as the non-root user. And we're just setting the time zone to where I'm based. The important bit really here is just this volume section, because the way this container works is as it's deployed, it requires a configuration file and it will dynamically load that on first boot. So if we hop over into the configuration file, here you can see a bare bones configuration file that should get this up and running. Now, as I mentioned, there's a ton more providers for this. So do go and check out their documentation if you're not using Cloudflare. There's something like 30 to 40 different providers and there's probably a load of help you can get anyway to make this work, even if it's not officially supported and you can submit a Git request to get new ones added. So let's have a quick look through. So notice the warning at the top, that's set to 600. In my firewall using dynamic DNS, I've got it set to 300, but they recommend 600. And the reason is just so when you're spamming that IP address, you do it too many times, they're gonna ban you. So setting it to 10 minutes is pretty reasonable. We've set SSL to yes, so it's gonna use an SSL check when it checks the website, more on that in a minute. We've said that the challenge method is going to be using a website, so you'll see that down here, this check IP dynamicdns.org. Um, so what's exactly happening here is that we are using this IP address, so if you put this into your browser, when it loads, it will show you your current IP address. You'll notice when you go to that website, it will have current IP address here. So I'm just skipping that by using this web skip command. I don't actually think that's required. I think it's intelligent enough to see the entire string that's returned and find the IP address within it, but there's no harm in putting that in. So you can use different providers if you want to go and do that, but I'm just using dynamic DNS because it's what I've used for years and it seems to always work reliably. But do note you can change that to whatever you want. Next, we get onto the actual configuration for Cloudflare itself, and this should look very familiar to what we've just been doing in the firewall settings. So we've got the protocol and we set it to Cloudflare. We've got the zone, so here, example.com, you change that to whatever your DNS is, so jimsgarage.co.uk. Time to live, I've just set to one, which I think is either default automatic or one minute. Either way, it's very small, so this should update at the quickest time available. Next, we want the login, so it's gonna require your email address, which is what we use to log into the dashboard and what I had previously used in the firewall setup. And then again, we're going to need that password for our API token. Now, if you remember before on the Cloudflare dashboard, you can have zones and within a zone, you could have multiple subdomains and domains. So here you would just amend this to whatever your domain is. And if you have specific IPs, different IPs for different subdomains, you could go and update those as well. So make sure that this is all configured. Make sure that this here, this volume points to this configuration file. And then you should just be able to go and deploy this container like you would any other. So sudo docker compose up dash D and that should be up and running. I'll show that at the end of the video. I don't want to do it now just because I'm configuring some IPs in the background for this demonstration. 
So here's a quick bash script that I've been using for a while before I had a dynamic DNS set up within my firewall and it should be pretty straightforward. We're specifying things like our zone ID, record ID, API token and the record name. It's then going to go away and have a look. So in this case it used to use I can have zip basically ICON has IP. So basically, again, just going over to that website, finding out what our IP is, storing that as a variable. We'll then get the IP that's associated with our DNS record. So it's going to go off to Cloudflare, going to use our API token, log in with our zone ID and get that information. It's then going to compare the IPs and if they're different, then it's going to update the record. It will update the record by going over again to the API. It will then log in with our credentials and it'll update the IP address on the DNS record with our new external IP. It will then spit out some details as to whether it was updated, whether it failed or whether it was ultimately successful and whether no update was needed. So feel free to use this. I'll add it to my GitHub. However, there is a more supported, probably a better script than this. And I'll show that now just over on GitHub. So there's a Cloudflare DDNS updater by Cop1Git. So got about 1.3K stars actively seems to be being maintained. So you may wish to go through this. It's actually a bit better than my script. It has a few more checks, etc. It has multiple ways of checking for your external IP in case this one here, for example, isn't available. And it also does some more checking as to see whether you've actually got a DNS record and all of those sorts of things. So have a look at this as well if you want to do it. The handy thing here is again, you simply need to fill out the variables at the top here and then run the script. Everything else should work. Now to get this up and running, basically the same as the script that I use as well, you basically want to use a cron job. So here you need to create a cron job in your cron and you need to specify how frequently you would like this to run. So as we've already seen, probably something like 10 minutes is about the right frequency. Otherwise you do risk getting yourself blocked. So let's do a quick test. Here you can see my current IP. I've blurred obviously everything by the last um, octet. And you can see it was last updated on the 2nd of July. So now if I head over into Cloudflare, I'm going to edit the IP address that's associated with my root domain name. So I'm going to hit edit. And then here where it's got my IP address, you can see the last few digits are the same. I'm just going to put something random. So I've now put a random IP address in there and I'm going to hit save. So that's now saved and it's completely wrong. And so if we head back into OpenSense, you can see that my current IP address is still the same, but my DNS record is different. So I'm going to fast forward and hopefully in within five minutes, this will change from the 2nd of the 7th to today's date. So after a little refresh, that's now updated. One thing that is important for OpenSense is you actually need to leave the username blank. Previously, I've had it whereby I've had to specify the username, but in this case, you have to use the username blank. So if we go back now to Cloudflare, you can see that that's now updated again back to my previous IP address. Perfect. So thank you for watching, everybody. Hopefully now you've got everything you need to make sure that your IP address stays constant with your DNS record. That means you shouldn't ever be getting locked out of your home services whilst you're away. And any other users, they simply need to put in your DNS name and they're always going to get the right IP. Anyway, if this is something you're going to use, let me know in the comments below. Give me a thumbs up, hit that sub, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, everybody.